Welcome to Gold Scratch. Today, uh, there's two reasons to make this uh, video. Uh, back in the spring, I uh, posted a video where I built an Austin Healy engine and I made a statement that I used this uh, garden sprayer device to prime the oil system and uh, uh, someone that was watching on the comments asked me to explain how to do that, so I'm going to cover that today. Uh, secondly, I also the same reason stated I would provide a, uh, a detailed description how to break in a flap tap a camshaft. So I'm going to cover that as well in this video. So first of all, um, this engine, uh, I did not build this engine. It was built by a reputable uh, company, engine building company. Uh, but it uh, had it failed, the camshaft failed on the startup. And that's not uncommon. And since then, it's been rebuilt again uh, by the same company, and the owner brought it to me to see if I could get it successfully started up. So, the original flat tap of camshaft uh, failed on startup, wore out a lifter and a lobe of the lift and the lobe of the camshaft, dump a bunch of shrapnel into the engine, and contaminated the oil system and did a lot of bad stuff. So, it had to be basically totally rebuilt again. So. So when I get it ready, it will go on my test stand and I'll be making a subsequent video when we actually uh, showing it running. Uh, but for today, I'm going to cover the steps I've taken so far. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen again, obviously. So here's the steps that I took. It came, the engine came to me pretty much looking like this. The valve lifters were set, uh, the valves were set or adjusted. And uh, there was no intake manifold on it yet. So the intake manifolds, uh, is here ready to go on. Uh, so here's what I did. I removed all the valve lifters and push rods of course and soaked the lifters overnight in oil and then um, well the lifters were out I needed to get some lube onto that camshaft. When I took the lifters out there was no uh, break-in lube on them and for that reason uh, I have to cover that. So here's what I use. Compcam's cam and lifter insulation loop and that's one of the important steps for breaking in a new cam. If I had installed this cam myself I would have sprayed it with uh, sprayed the cam with graphite lubricant before it went in but it's already in there and uh, that's a step that's optional and it's already not essential but everything helps right. So anyway uh, in order to get the cam lubed with the valve lifters out uh, I used this little brush I show here and I dipped that in, uh, in cam insulation loop and basically put it down the lifter hole and turned the engine over uh, as I did that and that uh, got the cam lubricated. I actually went through that whole process all 16 lifters uh, three full times and I turned the engine over while I was doing it so I'm pretty confident that the camshaft has got uh, proper uh, comp cams break-in loop. doesn't have to be comp cams, but proper, proper camshaft break-in loop on it now. Then when the lifters were reinstalled, I coated the bottom of the lifters again and reset the valves, of course. So uh, other checks that I did while the lifters were out, I took... Uh, took a lifter and I put it in every bore of the uh, every lifter bore and rotated it with my fingers because if the lifter can't rotate the camshaft's going to burn up in, uh, in no time at all. The lifters must be able to rotate uh, and otherwise they will wear out the camshaft. So that checked out okay. Uh, one of the other possible causes would be excessive valve spring pressure so I took one valve spring off and put it on my valve spring checker that you see there and it checked out fine. It only had 90 pounds uh, with the valve closed and about 250 pounds with the valve open. So that is not an issue. Um, one of the other things, I, I just to make sure we had the cam, we thought this is a Melling 222, which is basically an L79 uh, cam, which replicates a 350 horse 327 engine. Uh, back in the 60s and it's a great cam I used lots of them uh, so I checked the cam lift at the low but it's 250 thou or sorry 300 thou which is exactly right because the, the gross lift is about 450 on these cams so 
So that part uh, checked out fine as well. Uh, so what have you covered for? The valve springs, the lifter rotation. Uh, okay, we got all that. Now, the next most important thing is the use of, of engine oil once again. And so this is, uh, this is pen gate. This is bad Brad pen uh, break-in oil. It doesn't have to be Brad pen. It can be, I've used uh, Lucas uh, break-in oil. As long as it's got high zinc content, Joe Gibbs driven break-in oil with equal success. Uh, but it has to have the high zinc content in it. So uh, that's why we're using it. So how do you get the oil in the engine? So the conventional way of doing that is, is using this device here. Uh, some guys actually make a distributor or make one out of an old distributor and that's fine. Uh, using a screwdriver handle is not a good way because the, uh, the journal that you see on this device uh, blocks an orifice in the engine and if that isn't blocked when you pump it with a, your, with your speed wrench or your drill or whatever, uh, you're going to just dump the oil back into the pan and you're not going to get a good uh, flush. So, but that is still a good way to do it. Uh, one of the other ways and in some ways the best way is uh, a pressure tank system. So this is just a garden sprayer that I, once again, paid about $20 for at Home Depot. And I just adapted this sprayer, uh, put a, to a pipe fitting, and the pipe fitting goes into the block. Most engines have a fitting like this somewhere uh, that you can enter oil into the system. And so that's how we're connected, and simply by Pumping this, hard to do that while I'm holding the camera too, but pumping this device, I was able to get oil pressure on the gauge and oil to the rocker arms. Actually did this last night. Uh, There's a couple of rocker arms, just because I had to stop, I had something else to do. But as a couple of rocker arms, still haven't done it, still haven't got it, so I will continue priming today until I get oil at every rocker arm before I stop. So uh, once that's done, uh, it's, we're ready to put the intake manifold on and distributor set the timing and all that and I will cover the next six steps on a subsequent video in which case the engine will be running on my engine test tank. Hope you found that interesting uh, and look forward to the next video to cover stage two and uh, the, the birth of the baby and it'll be a successful one. Thanks for watching Gold Scratch.